Let's talk about let's talk about car notes and why car notes are terrible for your bank account. Um, so uh, so so what I'm going to do is kind of just reference it in general. Uh, first thing about car notes is really bad is that car notes are a depreciating asset. A lot of you already know that car notes are um, are not going to go up in value. Cars don't go up in value; they go down in value. Uh, as soon as you drive it off a lot, the price goes down. Uh, right now, cars have become extremely expensive. What happened was during the pandemic, companies realized that there was a massive amount of money they could make from used cars. And uh, and so, so what they did was after the pandemic ended and the supply chain issues went away, they just said, well, let's just keep the price high because people were buying it at the higher price. We have bigger margins. Uh, we're going to just stay that way. So people were discovering new business models during the pandemic that they didn't have before. Um, even in the hotel that I'm staying in, one guy told me that there were a lot of services and amenities they offered before the pandemic that they got rid of during the pandemic. But after the pandemic was over, they said, well, you know what? We realize our customers don't care if we actually clean their room every day. So we're only going to bring the maids in, you know, by request or a couple of times a week. So um, so car uh, dealerships have learned that restricting the supply of cars allows them to extract more money out of you. So now you're getting to the point where there are people, lots of people that have new car notes. I think 15, 20 percent, I want to say 13 to 15 percent, something like that, of new car notes are over a thousand dollars a month. And the average new car note, if I'm not mistaken, is about 700 and something dollars a month. Uh, and so cars being a depreciating asset uh, is literally a, a huge waste of money. Um, if you want to know how I buy my cars, my wife and I do, we do drive luxury cars. So I want you to understand like, like nice, there's nothing wrong with getting a nice car. If you want to drive, riding something nice, then do that. There's nothing, there's no judgment here. Uh, but so we buy luxury cars, but we never buy new luxury cars. When I buy a car, um, what I do is I find the dream car that I want. And then I, I go back three years. So it's 2023. I'm going to buy a car now. It's not going to be a 2023. It'll probably be like a 2020 or 2019. Uh, why? Well, because they, they take good care of them. And, and, and I, the last car I bought, uh, was a really nice infinity and it was three years old and literally by buying a car that was three years older uh it, it took i think thirty thousand dollars off the price it was an eighty five thousand dollar car the price dropped to like a little more than 50 because we went back three years in time and got a car that made us just as happy as the brand new car would have made um so just because you have the money doesn't mean you have to waste it um new cars are just not a good investment maybe an exception is if you really want that electric vehicle i don't know if there are a lot of good use electric vehicles or if that same rule would apply but i encourage you to kind of look into that um the other thing about about new cars or about cars is that uh the length of the loan causes you to end up paying a ton of interest i remember when i was in college and i had this really terrible girlfriend she was really mean to me and um and uh, but in her mother her mother was really nice and i liked her mother a lot and so i went to her with her mother to buy a, a new buy a car and her mother, she was a, she was she was in that you know that stereotype of the strong black woman. She was a strong black woman, and I personally think that's a compliment. I think you know, like my grandma was strong, my mom was strong, I, and my wife is strong. Ain't nothing wrong with being strong, but she was real strong, and she went in there and negotiated with this man, and the man was trying to get her to go up in in terms of the amount that she'd be willing to pay every month. You know, like it was I think that he offered her a deal where she was going to pay one thirty a month, and 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 he she said no, I only want to pay one ten. It was something like that, right? And they so they were stuck in the stalemate over like twenty dollars a month. And the man was getting frustrated and trying to, you know, him and Han push her to, to go up a little bit. Like, and, you know, everybody's like, dang, wow, she's really not budging. And then he comes back in and he says, guess what, uh, Miss Miss Smith? I'm going to say Miss Smith because I don't give her last name because I want, I want to know I'm talking about it on the Internet. Um, I said, uh, <laughs> so I said, guess what, Miss Smith? We, we finally found a way to give you the car at the price that you want. And she said, really? And they said, yeah. And so, um, I, so I, I stopped, you know, because I was a finance student at the time. I was an undergrad. And I said, OK, what did you change? And did you change the price of the car? Like, you know, before it was a, let's say $20,000 car. Is it still a $20,000 car? Or did you make it a $19,000 car? And they said, no, the price is the same. I said, okay, so that means that you had to change one of the variables. I said, did you change the interest rate? Is she being charged a lower interest rate? No, no, no. Oh, I get it. You changed the amount of time on the loan because that's the other variable that the other, only other variable you can change that's going to make the payment amount go down. Right. You had to change the time. So effectively, what I told her was I said, you know, they're, they're charging you the exact same amount. You're just going to pay more interest because you're going to be paying for, you know, six years instead of five years. So a lot of car loans are being stretched out because a lot of people buy cars based solely on the monthly payment, the monthly payment they can maintain. And the thing that you want to be careful about is when you get caught in the fixed monthly payment culture, what you're doing is you're creating wealth for the people that own the business. But but in, in order to create wealth for them, you're taking wealth from yourself, uh, you know, because because here's the thing. If you go through your whole life and you're, you're paying monthly rent and a monthly car note and, and monthly subscriptions for this, this and this, you know, it's OK to do that for some things. I have a lot of monthly things that I pay as well. But if you do that too much, then that ends up chipping away at your wealth. So a lot of these car notes are very long deals uh, that end up extracting tons and tons of money from you and your family over time. And the cars are getting more expensive and it's just getting bad. Also, uh, there's an issue with 
uh, interest rates going up. Uh, with interest rates going higher, obviously that's causing payments to go higher. Uh, the other piece is that uh, when you're talking about affordability, uh, the way I would kind of look at uh, purchasing a car is to sort of think of it as doing what you want to do, but just understanding what the trade-offs are, right? I, I don't believe in telling people to get cheap cars because that would make me a hypocrite. I don't buy cheap cars. Um, I would look at it as saying um, that about priorities, right? Uh, so, so the top priority for you as a wealth builder, everybody here is a wealth builder, I assume. That's why you're here. Your top priority as a wealth builder is to make sure that you're pouring some amount of money every month into something that's going to make you wealthier over time, right? So uh, when you're budgeting how much money you have every month, the first thing you take out of that budget is whatever percentage you want to put into your investments and your pre-existing assets, right? Your stocks, your real estate, whatever it is, right? And then at that point, uh, if you want to go for it and get the kind of car you want, you want to get uh, something fancy, something, even something expensive, even something a little bit gaudy, go for it. You know, just make sure you prioritize first because where a lot of people screw up or I don't say screw up, but they make the mistake is that um, like when we talk about things like the $5 day investing plan, right? Where literally by investing approximately $140 a month, you can make sure your child has a couple hundred thousand dollars by the time they're 30. A lot of people won't take the time to put that 140 a month in for their children, but they'll spend six hundred dollars a month for their um for their cardinal right so it doesn't make sense it's okay for you to have a cardinal of whatever size you want what doesn't make sense is for you to spend four times more on your car note than you put into your wealth building because whatever you pour into wealth grows i, I can show you mathematical equations that that will show you that wealth grows the way plants and flowers grow all of the equations we use in finance when i was getting my phd and we were talking when we were doing mathematical all it's all a bunch of mathematics constantly math all those equations derived from biology. All those equations were being used by the biologists across campus. In finance, we just borrow those equations. So basically, wealth grows the way a tree grows, the way um, the way an animal grows, the way a newborn baby grows. Like you can literally write down a mathematical equation for how long, how much a baby grows in a certain amount of time based on certain variables. So you can also have an equation for how money grows based on certain variables. And what you'll find is that the rate of growth of that money typically comes down to a couple of factors, actually. Um, it's how much are you pouring into it? Um, how long are you allowing it to grow? And how fast is it growing uh, just as a general rate? So so putting aside time and the rate of growth, what you pour into it is going to determine exactly what you get out of it. So one of the things that you never want to do as a wealth builder is get caught in the psychological trap of sitting here wondering, why do I not have any wealth? Why do I not have any wealth? Without asking yourself the, uh, the important question, which is, have I been pouring into my wealth? You know, have you been pouring into it? Have you been investing consistently? Have you been learning, uh, you know, spending time getting better at financial literacy? I'm not saying I'm not judging that, but there's a direct connection. You know, if you're a farmer and you want to have a big harvest, you can immediately go back and look at how many seeds you planted. And that will tell you about what your harvest is going to be. So uh, so that's that's the way I would kind of look at it. So I don't think that it's a matter. I, I hear people that will say that, you know, that it's bad to you know buy Starbucks and and or to spend money at the club or to go shopping at the mall. And you don't have any wealth because you like to buy stuff. I don't think that's true at all. I think you should enjoy your money. In fact, uh, studies show that when you get older, the thing you remember the most is not material things you bought, it's experiences that you have. So things like taking a trip uh, that you remember for the rest of your life, that's gonna stick with you a lot of times a lot more than just buying another pair of shoes or, or buying a bunch of clothes. So do those things, do all those things. Just make sure you eat your vegetables before you eat your dessert. Um, you know, that means invest, make sure you're investing and then at that point, enjoy your money, do whatever you want. And if you don't have enough money to do the things you want to do, what you may also want to invest in is uh, the knowledge and the networking to increase your income. There is a lot of money out here. There's a lot of money out here for people that know how to make money. So um, if I'm really trying to figure out how to make more money, what I want to do is get into spaces with other people that can help me get ideas. I can't tell you how many times I have seen people come up with a million dollar idea based on something very small.